Hello everyone and thanks for watching the first chapter of this series. From now on I will putting more videos but in part since the last one it was close to more than half an hour therefore I will be putting the chapters by parts well then let's continue with the next chapter but first the intro. Chapter 2 The New Devil on the Block Part 1 It was looking to be the start of a beautiful morning. The sky was clear of cloud cover, the sun was shining brightly, and a gentle breeze was blowing through the city, causing the trees to dance and sway. It was the kind of day where most people would feel blessed to be alive. Yuzumaki Naruto was not one of those people. He had never really been a morning person. He was the kind of guy who liked to sleep in as late as possible and get up well after the sun had risen. It was a well documented fact that unless there was an important mission, like, you know, protecting a daimyo or rescuing a princess or defeating an evil demon who wants to create a golem army to conquer the world, Naruto would sleep like the dead, at least until someone woke him up. On a side note, considering who often woke him up back then, his wake up calls were always extremely violent, not to mention painful, despite not having any inclination to do so. Naruto did wake up as the light hit his face, groaning in discontent. He made to sit up in his bed, blinking several times, he once more took a moment to curse the sun, as well as his blinds. Why they were even there when they did not block out that damned light was beyond him. As he absently looked around the room, a small frown formed on his face. He remembered what happened last night, that chick with the strange black wings and getting stabbed in the chest. As far as he knew, he should be dead by now. So how had he gotten back to his room? And just why wasn't he dead? His hand reached out to rub the center of his bare chest. The frown on his face grew even more prominent when he only found a smooth expanse of skin. If Naruto did not know any better, he would have never believed that he had gotten stabbed by that strange spear of light in the first place. It was almost as if he had dreamed the whole thing up. Except that the only thing he ever dreamed about was becoming Hokage and being chased by large bowls of ramen come to seek vengeance on him for eating their brethren. Don't ask. Regardless, that meant last night could not have been a dream. No ramen. No Hokage. Not a dream. His brow furrowing even more as he tried to figure out what happened and why he was not dead yet. Naruto placed his hands on either side of him so he could lean back and use them as a pillar of support while he put his thinking cap on. It wasn't something he liked to do often, thinking that is, but when required to do so he could actually put that organ in his head to good use. He just preferred not to because it wasn't as fun. Flying by the seat of his pants was more his style. As his left hand hit the bed, he felt something warm and soft and round underneath his palm. It felt absolutely nothing like this bed. He froze. On reflex, his hand gave an experimental squeeze which prompted a moan from whatever it was he had grabbed a hold of. His eyes drifted down towards his bed. Only it wasn't his bed that he was staring at. It was a girl. A very beautiful girl. A very beautiful, very familiar girl. She was also a very naked girl. He must still be dreaming. As he looked at the girl in his bed, he took note of several things. For one, the mount his hand was resting on was, in fact, the girl's right breast. Her creamy white skin created an interesting contrast to his sun-kissed tan, and the light pink of her nipple stood out even more starkly as the hardened nub peeked out from in between his ring and middle finger. He also noted that he knew this girl. Well, I recognized her at any rate. It was the same girl he had seen with the Nadashiko one after playing his prank on those three perverts. After leaving for class, he had asked one of his classmates about her. He had been surprised by what he had found out. Apparently, this girl was quite popular. The lust of all men and the envy of all women. Rias Gremory. Not that he could blame them. He thought to himself as his eyes drank in the girl's beauty, taking note of her silky smooth skin, and incredible figure. Her gorgeous crimson locks fanned across the bed to create a startling contrast with the white sheets he had taken to using. By the way, those sheets, they had been discarded by the both of them some time ago, meaning he could see all of Rias. And yes, that does mean all of Rias. His eyes stared at the area just above her flower. She was a natural redhead. Who knows. Reaching for his left arm with his right hand, Naruto pinched himself hard enough to draw blood. When nothing happened, 
The blonde's shoulders slumped a bit as he scratched his head in confusion. Okay, this wasn't a jinjutsu of some kind and this wasn't a dream. So then, why was there a beautiful, naked girl in his bed? Knowing that the answers would have to wait until the girl in question woke up, Naruto decided that the least he could do was go and make them both some breakfast. He was sure the girl could use something to eat when she woke up, regardless of how she got here. And truth be told he could do with some grub as well. Who knew getting stabbed through the chest could make one so hungry? Rhea's nose twitched as the smell of eggs and toast wafted to her on a breeze. Opening her eyes clearly, she found herself staring at a plain white ceiling. It was unfamiliar to her. She blinked several times as her mind began the proper process of waking up. The process was slower than usual today. She had used so much energy last night healing Issei and then Naruto that she must have exhausted herself. Because of this, it took her a while to truly wake up. But when she was finally fully awake, the young Gremory was able to easily remember just where she was and why. She was in Naruto's apartment, having brought him here after resurrecting him and Issei. She must have passed out from exhaustion after healing him. And speaking of Naruto, Rias turned her head to look at the rest of the bed and blinked when she saw the boy she had rescued was not there. Her nose twitched again as she inhaled the scent of food being prepared. Was he the one making breakfast then? Sitting up, Rias did not even bother covering herself with the bedsheet to protect her modesty as she took a look around the room. It was a very bare room, Spartan almost. Rias had never been in a male's room before, but she imagined there would be more decorations to it. At the very least she expected posters of various bands and even half-naked women to be hanging on the walls. All this room contained was a bed, a nightstand, a dresser, a closet and a desk with a chair in front of it. Even then, only the desk had anything on it. While she was studying the very plain room, the door leading out of it opened up. She craned her neck to see the very person she had been thinking of walk in. His hair was wet and matted down a little bit, though surprisingly it was still pretty spiky. He must have just gotten out of the shower a few minutes ago, and he was only wearing his black school pants and nothing else, allowing Riz an unfettered glimpse of his torso. It was one thing to feel his body while she lay with him, but it was another to actually see the physical proof of how physically fit the boy in front of her truly was. Due to the low lighting last night, she had not been able to really catch a glimpse of his powerful frame. But now, with the light from the sun filtering in through the window and brightening the room, she could see it much more clearly. There were many different body types that men could possess. Kiba, for example, had that skinny, somewhat effeminate frame most Bishounen boys possess. Then there were the muscle-bound brutes who had the hulking, powerful figures and veiny bodies. There were also the people who could be anywhere in between. Much like how women's figures could range from flat and tomboyish to full and feminine to even fat and flabby. Naruto's body was lean and highly athletic. He was thin, but it wasn't like Kiba's kind of thin. Unlike Kiba, who lacked any real muscle mass, the blonde second year's body was packed with perfectly defined muscles. He had broad, defined shoulders. His pectorals. Despite their smaller size than those meatheads who spent their entire life in a gym, looked like miniature bricks, hard and firm. And while he was still skinny, he had the powerful V-cut figure that many males have tried to achieve. He even had perfectly developed serrates anterior muscles on either side of his torso, which most have a hard time getting. They added a very aesthetically pleasing look when put in conjunction with his perfectly developed and defined six-pack abs. She wondered how a former human had managed to acquire such a perfect definition. There were many among her kind who had muscles like that, but even people like her brother lacked the sheer tone found on this male's body. These were not muscles gained through hereditary genes or demonic powers. These muscles had been gained through years of hard work and experience. They were muscles that were meant to be used. Good morning the blonde teen greeted her cheerfully as he walked over to the bed, carrying a tray in his hands. He did not even seem bothered by her lack of dress. Strange, most boys would have lost themselves to their lusts by now. At the very least, they would have gotten a serious nosebleed. This boy just kept getting more and more interesting. Good morning, Rias graced Naruto with a smile of her own. It was an almost unconscious gesture in response to the blonde's own cheerful grin. It seemed his brightness was infectious. Naruto set the tray down next to her. 
It was only then that Riss realized the tray was holding what looked like a full course breakfast. It had a plate of scrambled eggs, bacon, toast and a side of assorted fruits. There was even a glass of orange juice set off to the side. Sorry if this isn't what you normally eat. Naruto scratched the back of his head sheepishly, the grin on his face widening so much that it forced his eyes to squint. Combined with the way his whisker marks stretched, Rias could not help but be reminded of a fox. I would have made you a more traditional Japanese breakfast, but I'm not very good at cooking so. Rias could not help but smile. This Naruto seemed like such a nice young man, and so helpful too. He would be a great addition to her peerage. It's fine. She told him gently as she grabbed the fork that had come with the food. Thank you very much for making this for me. You did not have to- Ah. Well. You know. The blonde looked away from her. Or. He was blushing. How cute. It seemed her newest servant couldn't accept praise very well. I thought it was the least I could do since you saved me and all. He paused. Then looked at her with his head tilted questioningly. With his innocent personality combined with those whisker marks. Rias could not help but think he looked adorable. Certainly not Kaneko adorable, but cute in his own way. You did save me, right yes. I was the one who saved you, she confirmed before taking a bite of the food he had prepared for her. She blinked. This is very good, she complimented, causing him to beam. Thank you. Even though I can't make anything too complicated, I've always been good at making basic foods. He chuckled. A bit of self-depreciation mixed with good humor. When you've lived on your own for as long as I have, you learn a thing or two about cooking. I would imagine so. Rias looked at him inquisitively. She had heard he was an orphan. So his words made sense. Have you lived on your own for a long time over half my life? Naruto confirmed. I left the orphanage I was raised in when I turned 6 and never looked back. The old man Hockage managed to get me an apartment to live in while I went to school. Fire Shadow Rias blinked at the strange term. What a strange and unusual title. What is a Hokage ah? A Hokage is like, um. Naruto scratched his chin as he tried to figure out an appropriate analogy for what a Hokage was compared to the types of figureheads in this world. I guess you could say it's like a mare. He's the one who was in charge of the village I grew up in. I see. What an odd name for a village leader. And a village? Did that mean Naruto had been raised in some kind of small? Backwater village that was stuck in the more traditional Japanese era like the Sengoku period or something? So you've been living on your own for a long time, it seems. Her curiosity was definitely piqued. What about your parents? My parents Naruto blinked, then shrugged. Never knew em. My parents died about an hour or so after I was born. Oh. Rias flinched a bit. How rude and inconsiderate it was of her to ask something like that. He was an orphan. So of course his parents were dead. I'm sorry, Nan. It's fine. It's fine. Naruto waved off her apology with a laugh. While I never got to know my parents, I do know that they loved me very much. I'm here because they gave their lives for me. Really? His smile softened a bit, resembling a mix of nostalgia and the kind of content only people who have been said to have reached enlightenment had. That's all I need. Just knowing they loved me enough to give their lives so I could live is enough for me. That's a very mature way of looking at things, Rhea said, smiling a bit herself. Though that was only on the outside. Inwardly, she was frowning. His words bothered her greatly. From the way he spoke, it sounded like his parents had sacrificed themselves protecting him from someone, or something. Could it be that his parents were involved in otherworldly matters that usually did not involve humans? Perhaps one of the more violent devils or fallen angels had attacked his home and his parents died protecting him? And what did that say about Naruto? If there was a devil or fallen angel that had attacked him, there must have been a reason. Rias couldn't fathom what that reason was, as this boy had no sacred gear or anything of the sort. And yes, after taking him home she had checked to see if that strange healing ability was because he had a sacred gear. Perhaps his parents had simply angered the wrong person. It didn't necessarily have to be a devil or fallen angel who killed them. Humans were perfectly capable of killing each other. Whatever the case was, she would probably never know what happened unless she asked Naruto. But now was not the time for that. Can I ask you something? Riz looked up to see Naruto staring at her with his brows furrowed inquisitively. She offered him a smile. What did you want to ask well? Naruto rubbed the back of his neck. 
This may sound rude, since you healed me and everything, but why were you sleeping next to me in my bed? And why are you naked? His eyes swept over her body and Riss finally saw the lightest traces of a blush on his cheeks. It wasn't big, but it was there. She smiled. Pleased to know that his lack of reaction before wasn't because he didn't like what he saw. It would have been a blow to her ego if he had not found her pleasing to look at. Still, she wondered if his lack of serious reaction meant he had experience with things like this. It's fine. Rhea smiled reassuringly. I understand why you would be curious she paused. The reason I was in your bed was because I was healing your wounds. That stab wound in the chest was a fatal wound. I had to saturate your body with my magic in order to heal you. Magic Naruto adopted a slightly stupid expression as he scratched his head. You mean like that stuff where people pull rabbits out of their hat and whatnot? Riz covered her lips with her hand and giggled a bit. No, not like that. I mean real magic. You see, I'm a devil. A devil Naruto's face scrunched up in thought. You mean, like, a demon. Or something in layman terms. Riz confirmed with a nod. Though we don't actually go by the term demon. Devils are beings born in the underworld. Or hell. As you humans call it. I am a pure blood devil from the Gremory clan. One of the 34 clans remaining of the 72 pillars. I see. Naruto adopted a thinking pose. Which involved him placing his chin in his hand while the other held up his elbow. So you're from a really important family. He looked over at her. Are you some kind of royalty or something in a way? She said. The 72 pillars are the 72 devil clans that are what we call pure blood devils. Devils who were born devils and not reincarnated humans. Right now, there are only 34 remaining clans of the original 72 pillars. Though some of the clans are still alive, they no longer hold their status because they have human blood mixed with them huh? So it's not like an earned position but one gained because they don't mix their blood with humans. Exactly. What was that you said about reincarnating humans into devils when a human dies? It's possible for a devil to reincarnate them as a member of their peerage. Here it was. The moment she told him about his new status. Rias mentally prepared herself for the denial the boy would show when she informed him of his new status. That is actually what I did with you. Naruto blinked. Come again when I arrived. You were already mostly dead. Rias informed the blonde who was staring at her blankly. Your wounds could not be healed quickly enough to keep you alive. In order to let you continue living, I had to reincarnate you as a devil. So I'm a devil Riss nodded in confirmation. Naruto began patting himself down, causing her to look at him oddly. What are you doing I don't seem to be any different. He mumbled to himself and, I don't feel like going out and destroying a village or sacrificing virgin's children. And puppy is a second or two later he shrugged. Well, whatever. Might as well not sweat the small stuff. Right wrist sweat dropped. Devils aren't really like that. She informed him. It's actually against the laws of our kind for a devil to kill a human without just cause. Honestly, we're not that much different from humans. We just have powers humans do not have and we've been raised in a different society than humans. She paused, then added. And we're much longer lived than humans. Well, I suppose if you're the standard I can expect when meeting a devil. You guys certainly can't be bad. Naruto gave the girl a bright smile. You seem really nice. Nothing like what I've read from books and stuff. That's kind of you to say, and she meant it. While most devils might be insulted for someone calling them nice, she was not. I'm glad you don't seem to hold on to the stereotype most humans have for devils. I just try not to judge people by what they are, but who they are. Naruto rubbed the back of his head. To me. It doesn't matter if you're a devil or a human. So long as you're a good person. Then there's no reason your origin should matter. I've had too many people judge me based on things other than who I am as a person. I'm not going to do the same to someone else. Rias watched as his hand went down to rub his stomach. She took note of the odd action. But discarded it for now. Anyways. You should finish eating. Naruto informed her. We only have half an hour left before school starts. Rias blinked in surprise. She had been so caught up talking to Naruto that she had completely forgotten about the time. After you finish breakfast, you can take a shower. It's just down the hall on the right hand side. It's the only door in the hallway so you can't miss it. You'll find the towels hanging on the rack to the right. Thank you. 
As she watched the blonde scratch the back of his neck in what she was beginning to recognize as a habitual reaction to any kind of compliment or praise, Rias could not help but think about how lucky she was to have gotten someone like Naruto on her peerage. He was quite thoughtful and kind, and he didn't even care that she was a devil, or that she had turned him into one. Yes, this Yuzumaki Naruto would make an excellent addition to her peerage.